Hello and welcome to Beyond Art Tutorials. My name is Chris and today I'm going to talk about cleaning up an ink drawing you've done by hand, scanning into Photoshop and separating the line work in order to create clean transparent line work that's going to allow you to color and add effects and just make your digital workflow so much easier. It's a quick tip that uh, has so many benefits. So let's get started. First, you're going to want to scan in your finished ink drawing into the computer. My suggestion is just before you do that, if you've inked it by hand or if you've um, used a dark lead, let's say something like 6B to really darken that line work, you're going to want to clean up as much as possible by hand. I suggest using a kneaded eraser, a vinyl eraser, something that will clean up easy and, uh, and not leave a lot of dust. You, you can brush it off. And then you take that um, page and you scan it in. When you scan it in, um, your scanning software, whether it be the standard Windows one or the Mac one or whatever comes with your scanner, let's say Canon, HP, whatever, they give you software that has options for brightness and contrast. You're going to want to play with that a little bit when you, when you've done your preview in the software and you can pull the sliders around to kind of see if you can clean up your image a little bit before you even get it into Photoshop. And my suggestion is, setting the scanner to grayscale so you can eliminate any color because if you're drawing in black and white or in pencil you don't need all that color data so scan in grayscale and scan at 600 dpi so you get as much image resolution as uh, as you can for cleanup and then later on when you're done with your cleanups and you're done with this tip you can uh, shrink it down to uh, a nice working size like 300 dpi to continue working so once you're done scanning it in what you're going to do is uh you have your image you're going to go to image adjustments and levels and when you're there you're going to see um a graph with three sliders on the bottom the leftmost slider is for uh dark tones the middle slider is for mid tones and the rightmost slider is for you know light tones and you're going to see that graph it kind of grows gradually uh, near the beginning and then it, it kind of stays steady and then near the the light tones it just shoots uh it just skyrockets up playing with those three sliders is going to allow you to clean up this image so easily so you pull the dark tones over to about the beginning of the graph maybe a little past it i suggest you pull the light tones past where the graph starts to curve upwards pull it to the left a little past there and then play with your midtones until you're drawing, you can eyeball it till it looks clean without sacrificing your, your line work quality. So it's, it's just a delicate balance of just playing with these sliders. The general rule of thumb for me is I pull the leftmost slider just past the beginning of the graph where it starts to get data. I pull the rightmost slider past where the, uh, the graph starts to curve upwards. And the middle one, I slide it back and forth until I'm happy with it. You know, play with all three. So once you've done that, you hit OK. And then what you're going to do is next, you want to duplicate your background layer. So now you're working on a flat background and it, you have all your, your blacks and whites on one layer. You don't want that. Um, so duplicate your background layer to a new one and uh, call it something. You could call it cleanups. That's what I'm going to do here. Call cleanups and then you uh, you can fill your background layer with white because you don't need it anymore. You don't need two versions of the same layer. On your cleanup layer, you're going to go to channels. And you can see I have channels in a tab right here. If you don't see channels on your Photoshop layout, you can simply go to the window menu and select it and it will appear. And it's a useful tool, so I keep it on my layout at all times. You don't have to keep it there but you can access it either way from the window menu or you can just keep it on your layout so you can always access it so you're in there you're going to see a one channel it just says gray because your image is grayscale use it's selected already because there's no others there's a little option at the bottom a dotted circle you're going to click on that and that option is for, to load channel as selection and what that's going to do on a gray channel is select everything on the image that's not black so once you do that, you can see all your marching ants all over your image and just go ahead uh, back to your layer and you just hit backspace or delete on the Mac and it will clear out all the white. You'll just see it pop off. If you have your background layer on, just uh, click the eyeball icon to turn it off and you can see the transparent background. So you can see that now your line work is completely separated from your whites. 
And now you have this nice, clean, transparent piece of line work to uh, use as you wish. What I like to do is add my color layers under the line work uh, to make coloring so much easier that it don't interfere with the line work itself. It's on a separate layer. I can lock that layer if I want to. And I never have to touch it again except maybe to make some further adjustments and fixes. I will not end up interrupting it with any color or making any mistakes or chopping any lines off. It's nice and separate and I can do what I want with it. There's one more tip um, I'm going to discuss that uh, can take this even further if you're having more problems cleaning this up. One thing you can do at this point, you can turn the image all the way to bitmap. If you go to images, mode bitmap, you're taking the image down to only having black and white data. It will have no grayscale data, no color data. Bitmap only means it has black and white data. Those are the only two colors that can exist in a bitmap image. It says uh, flatten layers. You want to go ahead and flatten your layers. And then what you're going to do is the next one that pops up, you'll see two options. It'll say input resolution at 300. And the output, you want your input and output resolution to match. So whatever the input is, the output should match. Then on the bottom, it's it has different methods. The method you want to select is 50% threshold. You select 50% threshold, it tells Photoshop to make anything that's not white to turn it black. And that's it. Simple as that. So anything that's not white is black. Do that, hit OK. Well, it's going to turn your line work. It's going to be basically aliased, which means everything's going to have jagged, sharp edges. There's going to be no anti-aliasing, no fading. There's no obscurity. It's everything is just black or white on the image now. And this is actually very useful if you want to take this to print. And then since the image is so high resolution, once you scale it down and save it for web, no one's going to tell the difference because the lines will become anti-aliased anyway. And it's actually easier to do selections later on when you're coloring and, um, and trap your color work if you decide to take it to print later on. So this is actually beneficial in, in multiple ways, not just for cleanups. All right, when you've done that and you have this nice black and white image, what you're going to do is bump it back up to grayscale. You go to images mode, grayscale. It has one option, size ratio. Size ratio is one. Leave it like that. Hit OK. Now it's back to grayscale, but you have your background layer back and everything's merged together. Just repeat the same step over to separate them. You duplicate your background layer. You go to channels. Low channel selection, drop out the white on there, fill your background layer with white, and you're set. All done. And you have this nice, clean piece of line work to work on. You can remove any errant black marks. Let's say there was a gray mark you missed or something that levels in take out. Just simply use the eraser, take it off, and you'll be all set to work with this as you wish. I hope you found this useful. Look forward to more tips and tricks coming from me and look forward to um, a full set of tutorials. My first one will be drawing techniques and an ultimate guide to all sorts of, you know, not only digital, but uh, just working tips and tricks to help you with your drawings. So look forward to that.